Welcome to episode five. Right, so what are we doing today? Well, today we are going to focus a bit on the uh, crankshaft position sensor and the rotor and how they fit in the crankcase. Um, and to that end, I've um, 3D printed a few bits to sort of do a bit of a mock-up and um, see how the, uh, the whole thing's going to work out. So um, let's take a closer look at that. So yeah, you can see the modifications made to the actual crankcase. Um, the three standoffs that support normally support the points plate have been completely removed, mostly by drilling and then a bit of grinding. And then um, the old hacksaw and file method employed to take a chunk out the bottom of the uh, of the crankcase itself. This is just um, to mount a uh, an insert that'll hold the uh, crankshaft position sensor. So yeah, compared to the original crankcase, you can clearly see there's quite a lot missing now. So that is the original um, idea for the uh, for the rotor for the um, crankshaft position sensor. Uh, I decided not to make an aluminium hub for that in the end and to change the design a bit, mainly because I didn't like having all these screws there. I mean, this has got to be able to go up to sort of 8,000 RPM. Um, I didn't like all the screws. I didn't like the fact that um, the thickness is a bit of variation in the thickness. I thought it was going to be quite difficult to get it reasonably balanced. Um, so in the end, uh, and I also wanted to see if it was possible to fit something in the, the space, the allotted space that was just a little bit bigger. So I went with this option in the end. This is a, obviously a 3D printed mock-up. As you can see it is it is a little bit bigger than the um, original design and then if this is machined from steel in two pieces, so the rotor and then the hub um, with, its, uh, with its keyway to connect to the crankshaft, then if I leave these separate for now and just bolt straight through that then um, I've got the option of adjusting the position of the rotor to uh, get the timing right and then I'll just drill a hole in it and put a pin or something through there to lock it in place when, when that's all sorted out. So, But meantime, that's the, uh, the new design for the rotor and then that's the uh, design for the uh, little component that's going to hold the um, crankshaft position sensor. So this fits in the in the modification to the crankshaft, uh, to the crankcase, sorry, and then that'll fit in there. And it gives me a bit of uh, room to position it to get the air gap correct. This is the method of clamping the uh, crankshaft position sensor. I don't know what you call that, but it's a common type of fixing used on model airplane carburetors so it's a tried and trusted method of uh, of clamping things together so this goes through a hole in the side there and then as you can see the cut cutaway is aligned with the uh, with the bore and then when the um, sensor is in you just tighten up the nut and that gives you a sort of cam action that actually clamps it in place um, so obviously when this is tightened up fully that'll be locked in place and won't be able to move so and then we're just gripping on the uh, uh, on the outside of the housing over here I've removed the uh, Sagam writing that was on there just to make it round um, and uh, yeah it should hold it quite well it did have a clamp attached but uh, for some reason it was damaged and it came off. So the other groove is for an O-ring. So there will be an O-ring on there that will seal inside here. And then this will hopefully fit in the modifications. And, um, and then uh, will be fixed in place with some epoxy as well as some screws. So we're just going to attach that and see how it looks. So the first thing I think is to get this little guy installed there um, and see if it's all going to line up correctly. So it's just a few caps, a pair of cap screws. I mean this is also going to be fitted in place with epoxy 
Now, I've had a look at a few different kind of um, brands of epoxy and it looks like JB Weld is probably going to be the best one because it's um, heat resistant up to I think 260 degrees so probably ideal for this application. The only reason I want to use epoxy is to strengthen this area a bit and also because right at the back there there is a little bit of a gap where I've had to um, cut and file away some of the crankcase so you know we obviously we don't want um, any water getting in here um, and rusting the components so so yeah that fits quite well over there and then our um, a little clampy thing and then that's where our uh, crankshaft sensor will go so we've got quite a lot of adjustment there incidentally the service manual does give us the specifications on the air gap so that's easy and then here yeah, we've got the uh, the new rotor um, and there's obviously a pin there which needs to locate in that keyway so um, that's why I've left it loose so that it can it can rotate and I can position it how I need to when when the time comes to actually set the timing so yeah so we've got loads of room there to get the alignment correct uh, that'll just go in there with an M8 M8 screw and then yeah and then we can set our alignment there tighten up this little screw there and that'll lock that in place and in theory should be good to go then yep that's all going to fit quite well I think so the thing to do now I think is, is make this out of metal so this will be aluminium and then we'll do this out of steel and, um, and see how it all fits together So we're back with um, with the uh, newly machined components, and here's our new uh, our new um, rotor, and this is then machined from a single piece of uh, mild steel. Obviously, you can't use something like stainless steel because it needs to uh, affect a magnet, which stainless steel doesn't do. So, and um, these additional holes I just put in there because I needed to clamp it in a little fixture. I haven't machined out these big cutaways because to be honest I can't be asked and uh, I don't think it's really going to make all that much difference and it's a lot of work so but the rotor looks pretty good. Uh, I've taken all the burrs off. Um, we also have this new hub. Now same situation at the back you've got the key keyway to locate off that pin um, and then that's quite a close fit on there and it can rotate on there so it'll be pinned when I know the precise final location of it um, 
So I've made this flange quite big so that I can put a reasonably large pin through there. I might just use a grub screw, might just tap, tap the thread through both, stick a grub screw maybe two opposite each other, which will then get covered by this washer. So um, that should prevent them from coming loose at any point. So it should be pretty safe to do. So that's that. And then I've also done this aluminium part, which replaces the 3D printed part at the top there. So we'll just check the fit of all of this and see if it's all gonna work. Incidentally, these threads don't need to be particularly tight. I'm hoping the epoxy will do most of the work. So there we go, so that fits there, same as the 3D printed one did. So let's screw that down. I'll fine tune the position of that later to try and line that up as well as possible with this face here and try and create an unbroken area there for the gasket to seal against. If there are any issues with it sticking out a bit, then it's not the end of the world. I can always take a file to it and uh, just true the whole face up a little bit. I might end up doing that anyway. We'll just have to see. But uh, I've, I've made these holes half a mil oversized, so there should be a bit of wiggle to get this lined up, or at least, if not exactly, at least pretty close. Yeah, I can feel a bit of an overlap there, so I should be able to line it up very close. And then once the epoxy's in there, that should fill in that little gap, and we should have this thing watertight, hopefully. Right, and then the, obviously first the, uh, the hub, which fits there, only has a tiny little bit of play on it, which is fine. And then the, uh, the rotor itself, May as well get the direction of rotation correct. That's a very close fit on there. And then we've got a washer and an M8 cap screw. So tightening this up will be a lot easier once the engine is assembled. Um, so I can't really tighten it up properly now, but at least we can get an idea of if it's all gonna fit. So there we go. Looks like it's running pretty true. Um, we install the sensor on it. I did notice um, that this method of clamping does make it quite difficult to get the O-ring past this little cutaway the where, where this hole intersects the main ball. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to install the sensor without the uh, rotor in place and push it down past this lower edge so I can install the O-ring in place and then pull it back up, which will work. So it should be fine. So yeah, there we go. I mean, that's, it looks pretty true. It looks good. I can position this anywhere I want to, depending on how I want the cable to go. So, and it doesn't look like this is gonna get in the way of anything. I mean, there is an engine mounting over here, but it is quite far away. But yeah, that's looking pretty promising, that. I think there's a good chance this will, this will work out. So yeah, next thing to do is to actually attach it with some uh, epoxy and see, uh, see if we can get it all straight and lined up. Okay, so we're definitely getting somewhere now. Um, I feel like we've put this to bed to some degree. The only test I still need to do is um, I'll run it at a higher speed and, and just make sure that it's all working because I've only had it up to about 500 RPM. So I feel like it's it's worth a test at, at higher speed and just make sure it's all working. But um, meantime, um, I think the next thing to do is look at uh, some of the other things that um, need to be ma made to suit this engine. Um, might get the head out next and start looking at the intake manifolds because uh, they're going to be fairly complicated. Um, I'll do a 3D mock-up of that as well and mount the throttle bodies with the uh, air filters and everything and just see how the, all of that works. In fact, I'll just temporarily put the head and the uh, barrel back on the, uh, on the crankcase so we can see what clearance we've got. It'll be interesting to see 
um, what the situation is going to be with the uh, cam chain tensioner and whether there's enough space underneath. Um, other things that still need to be sorted out are the um, oil temperature sensor. So I haven't decided where I'm going to put that yet. Initially I was going to put that over here. Uh, there's a plug that goes in there. Um, I'm not sure though how much oil flow there is past this point. So we'll have a look at that. I think it, it is feeding up this way into the um, into the cylinder head to lubricate the camshafts. So it might be just a case of um, drilling and tapping the uh, the plug that goes there and putting the sensor on there. Uh, might have a go at that and see how that works out. Um, yeah, it should be okay actually. There's quite a lot of oil flow past it. So there'll be enough, I think, to get a reading on the oil temperature. Um, so that's a fairly simple thing. And then, um, yeah, it'll be time to start putting an engine together. So looking forward to that. Uh, and anyway, yeah, thanks for watching.